Africa's elephants are in crisis. In 2012, the crisis reached its limit where the illegal killing went to up to 70%. We lost, we estimate, 100,000 elephants in just three years between 2010 and 2012. We're not out of crisis yet because there are few other parts in Africa where things are still very bad. Unfortunately, because of the profit margins to be made from ivory, we've ended up with a situation where organized crime and rebel militias, and even in some cases terrorist groups, have been involved in profiting from ivory. We are working through our Elephant Crisis Fund and with the broad coalition of partners that have come together under the Clinton Global Initiative. We've all solidified around these uh, three priorities, which is to stop the poaching, stop the trafficking, and end the demand for ivory. Samburu Lake Kipia is one of the wonderful places where you can view elephants. If an elephant is doing well, right below the umbrella, everything else will be doing very well. So that's why if elephants have enough space to roam, that is only the advantage to a lion, to gravy zebras, to giraffes, because you know, elephants cover hundreds of kilometers. Saving elephant or doing a good fight for elephant is actually doing a good fight for our ecosystem, which is our life. Elephant tracking, or where the elephants go, has been always one of our big interests. One of the key gains that, that we're seeing on the ground is through the GPS tracking technology and the collars that we fit onto elephants. So this is an elephant collar. This is where the GPS unit is, where all the data is actually stored and sent. This real-time information is relayed to command and control centers where they have it on a big screen. We are here in Save the Elephant Research Camp. As you can see, different uh, colors represent here different animals. Through this sort of bird's eye view of what's going on, security managers can then deploy their patrols and, and say, OK, they're moving into this area, there's human populations here, let's get a patrol on the ground. And they're there before the people realize that the elephants are arriving. This accumulation of data has helped us to actually make a lot of proper plans, I can say. The tracking database that we have will send us alerts when they move and naturally slowly or unusually fast, or in the worst case scenario, when they stop moving. So this collar was uh, on a female called Hadija. She got killed, and then they put all these bullets on the collar to make sure that we can't find the collar or the body. But we still did find, because you know we went to the where the collar was last uh, reporting. So poor Hadija uh, left about seven calves um, behind. Some of them are alive now, and we're tracking that group at the same time now. It's a tragedy when they lose a member because they really remember that we, we've lost someone. They go back to this, you know, old carcasses and check and, you know, mourn about this kind of thing. So it's, it's very hard for elephants. It's just like us. They really us, just, you know, like us. They behave like us. In the long term, Africa's elephants face another problem, which is that Africa's human population is mushrooming. All of that means less space for elephants. This is a problem that's far too big for any one individual or organization or even nation to solve on its own. And that's where the convening power of the Clinton Global Initiative has been crucial in bringing people together. And we now have an elephant crisis fund that exists to fund this coalition and catalyze action on the ground.